Welcome back to StarCraft Trivia with Necro. The category is Maps. The Team Liquid Map Contest is now a staple in the community. For the past several years now, pretty much half of the maps that we play on are community made. But it's not always been the case. Adding community made maps to a map pool was especially new to Korean tournaments. What was the first non Blizzard, non Korean made map to appear in a Korean tournament map pool? Was it A. Cloud Kingdom? B. Merry Go Round? C. Neo Planet S? Or D. Ohana? The answer is A, Cloud Kingdom. This was a map that won the very first Team Liquid map contest back in the fall of 2011. Ohana actually came in second place. Not long afterwards, it was also incorporated into the map pool and the Korean tournament map pools, so like GSL. This map is historically important because it's the first map ever in both StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1 to be implemented in Korean leagues. Also showing the potential of community maps and encouraging more and more map contests to occur. And the S layout was very original, inspiring some maps like Galactic Process and Eternal Empire. And just the aesthetics too was unlike anything we've seen before. Just look at the maps that came before it. Antigua Shipyard, Arid Plateau, Entune Valley, Metalopolis, Shattered Temple, Zelnaga Caverns. They're all kind of earthy, rustic-like maps, and then BAM! Cloud Kingdom drops and oh my god, I mean look at it, it's like a map from the future. The S-shape is symbolic of its creator, Superu Man. Do not forget that name. Have you ever thought to yourself, god damn, we're gonna have a whole other season with this map again? What map has been in the StarCraft 2 map pool for the longest amount of time? And I'm talking in months, not seasons, because the seasons do vary in time. Was it A, Abyssal Reef, B, Akalon Flats, C, Antigua Shipyard, or D, Catalyst? The answer is C, Antigua Shipyard by Blizzard. Catalyst was in the map pool for 9 months straight, Abyssal Reef for a full 12 months, Akalon Wastes for 14 months straight, and Antigua Shipyard for 19 months. Antigua Shipyard though was a great map and it made for easily one of the greatest games of all time, MMA vs Gumiho at the 2012 GSCL Season 2 Finals. At the same time, the Vikings now suddenly in a solo take down the base at the bottom of the map. Gumiho, man, is really, I mean... He's still behind an overall supply, but yeah. he's playing so well. He knows what to use, he knows where to fight. He's got to be careful with these Ravens, though. Those are so expensive, he may lose them. One can go down for sure, no! Oh my god, he actually repairs it immediately. He's able to save it, but the base is now suddenly attacked. And this is like the lifeline of Gumiho. He doesn't have any additional income. He needs to save this base. Oh, and he will save it. 300 hit points left. And the base to the south, the center base to the south that he's taken offensively, is actually starting to mine now. He's dropping mules here. There's a lot of minerals to be had there. MMA is mined out at the top right. He's lost his base to the south. And he no longer has the economy advantage that he once had. Now the mule hammer has been dropped and now Gumiho being down on 19 harvesters. He really has to rely on this. But the army supply is still in favor of Gumiho here. All these SCVs, if they get caught by those Hellions, it will be a tragedy. But unfortunately, he's not going to find those. So many SCVs on one base for MMA. But the problem is, if Gumiho gets even one more base, he's going to have better saturation. And he's rebuilding workers right now, evening the count, killing some workers here with Hellions. We still have three Banshees, oh, yes, AT Changs, and a Doom drop by MMA. He's got a few turns, but that's not enough! He's More fading the fire with the Vikings, and now he drops in the main base! And Gumiho's army is so slow, he will lose his production! He needs, he needs to do something here, what's he gonna do? How will he react? It looks like he's sending his tanks home! And final question of the segment, 
coincidentally, this map was the runner-up at the Red Bull Team Liquid Map Contest, also known as Team Liquid Map Contest 3 really, and was featured in the Red Bull Battlegrounds Atlanta. That tournament produced one of the best StarCraft 2 moments in history. Which map featured Scarlet's famous Burrow Banelings versus Bomber? Is it A. Daybreak, B. Frost, C. Habitation Station, or D. Whirlwind? The answer is C, Habitation Station by Sidian the Bard, the creator of Ascension to Ire, Abyssal Reef, and King's Cove as well. This match of course is legendary and it all happened because we voted this map into second place of the Team Liquid Map Contest 3. Voting is important, okay? Just do it. It for it, the game, the last another scan. orbital gonna go. The last scan's down, there are no scans left. Scarlet is going to be on Burrow and Run. She has killed off the last Orbital Command. Scarlet refuses to engage without the Mutalist. The Queen's taking damage. A Queen falls, but Scarlet on the regroup is... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! The crown on their feet! Scarlet, the most incredible game I have seen in DVT! Acer Scarlet qualifies for the playoff matches! The crown has lost their mind. I, I think I've lost my mind. That oh. was, you know what? We didn't even see the Banelings get burrowed as oh she was running God. away, Sean. That was oh remarkable. It's freaking brilliant. Scarlet is the winner.